This is the plaintiff, Kathleen Sanders. She says she rented a room in the defendant's apartment and everything was fine until the day she got home and the lady said, get your stuff and get out. She's owed for rent and security that she paid and is suing for the $700 she's due back. This is the defendant, Robin Martin. She says the plaintiff had 10 different overnight visitors, which she told her was prohibited. Since the plaintiff broke the rule, she kicked her out and owes her nothing. She's accused of being a little too strict. All parties, please raise your right hands. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Williams is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Sanders. Yes, ma'am. You rented Honor. a room in Ms. Martin's uh, apartment, I guess. And how long were you living there? I lived there from January and February totally, and then just a few days into March. And what went wrong? Honestly, I don't know. I When I rented the room, I saw the ad. Um, it was $500 a month for rent, and then it was supposed to be $200 deposit. I'm on disability. I'm disabled. And I, I told the lady, Robin, I What's said, the Robin, nature? Of, can, can I ask you the nature of the disability? Is it physical or mental? What's the nature of the disability? It's, it's physical. Um, okay. I am a, uh, I'm a liver transplant patient and... It, in the hospital one time I, I fell and I broke my hip. I'm doing everything an 80 year old lady does now. So she, okay. kn she knew about this and my disability check comes on the third and I said to her, um, well, my disability check comes on the third. If I move in on the first, can I take your, or would you feel better for, if I just moved in on the third? So I moved in on the third and I paid her $700 room and, and deposit. As I'm moving yeah. my stuff in, there's still stuff in my room. She starts telling me that some of the stuff in the closet has to stay there. And I'm like, okay, whatever. The bed you're going to sell, whatever. And the lady that was helping me move that I hired looked at, my, looked at me and went, she's a snake. And I was like, she's fine. Because I like to think the best of people. So Wait, why did the anyway, lady who was helping you move say she was a snake? Because of the last minute things that of, she was saying? Yeah, the last minute things that she was kind of adding it. Now, here's the thing. I have texts where I wrote, hey, is it all inclusive? Does, and she said, yes. Um, I, then we had a conversation on the phone, and I said, you know, the reason why I'm leaving why I'm leaving now is because the lady has a young, a young daughter, and I want to be able to have friends come over. And is that going to be a problem? No. For January, it wasn't a problem. For February, it wasn't a problem. But I told her, and she had guys over all the time. It was never a problem. So I told her that this guy had messaged me. His name is Chris. And I told her how I had known Chris. It's really, it's a crazy, weird story. Chris is my ex-boyfriend's ex-wife's ex-boyfriend. Okay, you could kind of get to the point here. Okay. So the bottom so line anyway, is that go, this fellow stays go, over. He stays over. Um, we were up to like 3 o'clock in the morning. He be, I go, come out of my room, and she's freaking out. She's like, uh, you, you weren't At allowed to At 3 in the morning the, she's freaking out? No, or no, in no, the no, morning? No, no. She's, it, it, in the morning. The next morning. She, we, Okay. I come out of my room and she's she's just kind of sitting on the couch, Patty, and I go, is everything okay? And she's like, um, mad at me that he spent the night, that he he's his car was probably towed. I was like, his car wasn't towed because there's a, a website painted on the parking spots for visitors where you register your car. And she started freaking out about that. And I was like, well, we, we're going to go get something to eat. And I was hoping that she'd calm down. We come back and I go in to get my, my charger and Chris goes, where's your doorknob? And I was like, oh, I didn't even notice it. I walked out of my room, and I'm kind of getting nervous now, and I just looked at her, and I said, is there something wrong with my door? And she's like, you broke the rules, and blah, 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 blah. You need to get out now. Ma'am, 
She has been having money problems from the minute I started. The day I got a job, she knew when I was going to get paid. She tried to borrow $60 from me. I told her I did not have it. I used my disability food stamps on her. She had me pay rent on the third, like I always do, cash. She took me to the ATM, and I know what you say, Cash goes out hand, one out one hand, receipt comes back in another. I went to paralegal school. Like my hair, I love you, Judge Marion. So, all of a sudden, the fifth comes, or they, they pay. The seventh, come, that's the seventh. The next day, she kicks me out after I've used all my food stamps and my all my money. I don't get a lot of deposit. Why she do you leave, mad. though? She, like, in other words, she can't kick you out. You're a renter. A landlord no, she, can't say, hey, get out, and you have to get out. Like, I you could have just said, I, yeah, make me. Well, she was getting confrontational. She actually got to a point where she okay. put her hand out and put, put, touched my nose. I have a text from a friend. So you, just, like, you didn't want to be there, and you didn't want the confrontation. The, the police so where did you go that day? Up. The police showed up. Did you call the police? Well, she said she was going to call the police, and she didn't. We sat outside and waited for them to call the police, and they didn't come, so we called them. They came, and we told them what was going on. And I hear her in the background going, um, she's probably high. Look at all those pills she has in her room. You know, they're anti-rejection pills. They're vitamins. I mean, I, I was like told the police, Go ahead and look at them. She's trying to paint me as something I'm not, like I'm a hussy, I'm a whatever. No, nobody that I brought into her home was a stranger to me. And I did not bring 10 guys home. I don't know 10 I have guys. two questions. I have two questions. Okay. Number one, did she ever tell you you couldn't bring anybody there? Never. Never. And number two, had you brought other people there and it hadn't been a problem? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ms. I Martin, what's going Jan? on? I told her the day she moved in, because my apartment complex has rules and regulations. They do not allow any overnight visitors at all whatsoever. And if there is an overnight visitor, we have to go to the office and get an overnight pass for them to put in their vehicle to show that's a yellow slip of paper that they have to show that they're there overnight. Okay, she was never on my lease. I did her a favor by letting her rent a room from me. She was never on the lease, never. So, like I said, wait, how did you do her a favor? Stop, 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 stop. How did you do her a favor? How did you do her a favor? She was paying you rent. Okay, so um, therefore, like I said, um, she rented the room out. Okay, I told her to begin with, no visitors overnight. She had way more. Do you she have like that in writing anywhere, like an email that you might have sent her saying you can't have visitors? Because that's unusual, you see. No, I, it's unusual I to tell somebody that they can't have visitors. So if you want me to believe that that was an agreement between the two of you, I would like to see either a lease where it says that or an email where you told her that or a text where you told her that. Do you have any of that? It was verbally. I told her in person, face to face. When she moved in. Watch this. Did she ever tell you you couldn't have guests over? No. And a lot, everything I yeah, tried to do, that's what, I tried to okay. do Okay. So now, go on. What did she do that caused you to throw her out? Tell me what happened. I threw her out because, for one, she stole from me. When I, she moved in in January, I was out of town for two weeks. And I had a bed that I was selling. And I told her to sell it and, um, and bring me the money because I was out of town. She sold the bed. She lied to me. She never said she sold it. She kept the money. It was $140. She kept it. And then she decides to tell me the day before I'm coming home. She waited two weeks to tell me this. She decides to tell me the day before I'm coming home and says that, um, oh, well, by the way, I sold that, that bed. And uh, I'll just give you the money on the third. So I was like, you know, you're stealing from me all of a sudden. You know, I, you just moved in. And now all of a sudden you're stealing money from me. I was like, you know, I trusted you in my house and I trusted you, you know, to do that. And he, you go behind my back and you steal this money. So I was upset about that, you know, so I, but I forgave her and I was like, okay, you know, let's move on. And then after that, you know, she's bringing every Tom, Dick and Harry in my house. And there's like 10 different guys that she had in my place. And I'm thinking, who are all these different people that you're bringing in here? You know, it's, oh, I'm just dating. I'm on the website and I'm trying to find somebody to date and blah, blah, blah. 
And I'm thinking, okay, you know, you're making yourself look bad. You got all these Tom, Dick, and Harrys, you know, coming through here. And then the last guy in March. Were you, you know, jealous? Well, anyway, like, I'm not jealous. I have a boyfriend. I am far from jealous. I have one steady boyfriend, and that's all I need, okay? I don't need every Tom, Dick, and Harry in, in the land, you know, to, to come by. I'm, I keep to myself. So I'm what did you person. tell her on that morning in March? What did you say to her, Ms. Martin? I told her to get out because uh, I said, I said you, you're going behind my back. You're, um, you're breaking the rules. Uh, you have to get out. Well, you just tell her to get out, just like that. You've already, you just accepted her rent on March 3rd. It's March 7th or something. And you just tell her, get out. And you give her back her money? I said, because you're breaking, I said, you're breaking the rules. You're going behind my back. You're doing stuff you should not be doing. So therefore, you have to move out of my house because I cannot trust you. You stole my money, first off. I said, um, Okay, so I you returned her money, you, right? You returned the rent for March no, and you gave her I back her security, her. right? No, no, because she broke the rules. So I said, you got to go. I said, if Okay, I'm not rules, familiar with that particular law where if you're mad at somebody because you have a rule and they break it, you get to turn them out on their heel and they have she to sleep on a park money. bench. She I'm not, first money. of all, I don't even believe you that you had that rule with her because you can't prove it yes, at all. I did. So, yes, but I let's did. assume that you did. I don't really care. I don't believe you, but let's assume you did. Where do you come off throwing her out and then not returning her money. Throwing her out is your remedy for breaking the rule. Stealing her $700 isn't, you see? If you don't like that she lives there, you're supposed to give her 30 days notice, not tell her get out and take her doorknob off. You're breaking the rules. The rules of a month-to-month -month tenancy is that you have to give her 30 days notice, okay? Then after you break that rule, you move on and don't return any money. So you're stealing her money. If you don't want her there and you're lucky enough that she says, all right, I'm leaving right now, and the police don't say, hey, she's a tenant, you can't throw her out, go take it to court, which is what the police usually say, all right? It, but probably you didn't even want to stay. You just wanted to get out of there. It was unnerving. But whatever the reason may be, once you throw her out, what makes you think there's any rule on God's green earth that allows you to keep the rent and the deposit? She is not, she is not on the lease. So therefore, she is not supposed to then be, I, she was not on the lease. That doesn't matter. You have a landlord-tenant relationship and you are a mere mortal like the rest of the landlords who have to give 30 days notice. But if you don't, and you're lucky enough that she just leaves because of your tactics of taking her doorknob off and everything else you did, if you're lucky enough that she leaves, then that's your remedy for her not following the rules. You don't also get to steal her money. $700, verdict for the plaintiff, plus your court costs. She stole from me. She would never stole from me then. What about that? Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, whatever. Your poor sympathy lady, you're full of I don't owe you a dime, okay? So you can just go somewhere. Well, you're telling her, go somewhere. Well, anyway, the judge has found for the plaintiff, no question about it. Ms. Martin, you just got washed out by the judge. You owe her that money. You can't keep it. Why are you shaking your head no? Because she has no say-so in Texas. Well, you're not on the lease. You have no say-so whatsoever. Well, in this court, she has all the say-so, and she's just issued a judgment against you for $700. You got to give her her money back and the deposit. That's the law. Ms. Sanders, you're getting your money back. Okay, you're satisfied with that? I am very satisfied. And I, I when I went to uh, <laughs> paralegal school, every single time I, every time I could, I would preface a question. Well, you see, on the people's court, <laughs> and I <laughs> love this show. This was one of my bucket lists when I was dying and I got my, tra right before I got my transplant, I was, one of my things I said was, I never made it on the people's court. So. Well, yes, you have now. I got it. You've made it. This I is got your it. day. Oh, I'm living. <laughs> I'm living. Donate your organs. Congratulations. Somebody's going to live. Congratulations. So okay. <laughs> Let's see what the judge has to say. Here she is with Judge John now, another session of After the Verdict. The thing I liked the most about this case, Marilyn, was the haircut 
on the plaintiff because <laughs> I, I, I did a little quick research and I found this and I got to say uh, there's a light there's a certain oh, likeness <laughs> certain resemblance there between the two of you. <laughs> Uh, when you're renting a room to someone, you have a month-to-month -month tenancy like this, you got to abide by the rules. Of course you Landlord do, even does, in Texas. I don't know what that lady's talking about. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> right, and that includes the 30 days notice. Of course. So a uh, pretty uh, subtle way of saying um, you're not welcome here when you remove the doorknob. Yeah, the... it's outrageous. Exactly. Well, the plaintiff's uh, transplant survivor. She's gone through some health issues. She looked you great. You and I are both. She, she shouted out. Become yeah. an organ donor. Right. You and I are both organ donors. Yep. All my children are. We all have it on all of our it's licenses. It's on my driver's license. On our driver's license in Florida. And I got a little note on the back that says, "Just make damn sure I'm dead." That's <laughs> it. Right? That's it. So Kent wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, People's Court is an American institution. Why do you think it's been around for so long? Well, I need a job. <laughs> no, look. The the real reason is that the people's court, I think, is fun to watch. It's, you know, litigants can be characters, judges great. She also learned something. And I think people want to take away something from the television they watch. And over time, people have learned a lot about the law and a lot about how to resolve disputes. Because if you've seen what's happened in this country over the last eight months, it's all about dispute resolution. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.